Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, I've just finished most of my watering for today and um, I need to start getting myself looking pretty for my Orchid Society meeting in the not too distant after lunch. Um, but I just wanted to put this video out on the grounds that I've always said you've got to keep your eye on things. Yeah, because things change slowly. Now we've had a lot of bad weather lately. We've had storms, we've had drizzly days, we've had dull days, we've had all that sort of thing. So for the first time in a while, the sun's come out. Twenty seven point eight. That's nearly twenty eight degrees in here, and that's the air temperature. That's not the temperature on those leaves in the sun. So I think we're um, coming up to the point where that single layer of shade netting needs to go back up. And what I think I'll do in the interim, because I still want the bright light, I don't want to start excluding light at this time of year, especially for the resting dendrobiums. But, you know, there's things like Restrepias down here in full sun. Well, they'll take it for a short while, and luckily today clouds come and go, so it gets chance, the fan gets chance to cool things off. Um, in between, you know, the sunny spots. But that's the first time I've done that this year. That's up to gale force. That's on number three. It normally sits on one. And that is to get these leaves moving. If they're moving around and the air's moving across them, it's being changed all the time. It, it, it stops them heating up quite so much. But it's coming to that time and it just suddenly dawned on me. It's nearly the end of January. You know, we're up day lengths are getting longer, sun's getting higher in the sky and when you don't see the sun for ages you forget and um, yeah I don't want to get caught out, I don't want loads of singed leaves so I think what I may do in the interim is um, <clears throat> get the shade netting out and get myself some easy to use pins of some sort so that when I get a sunny day I can pin it up and then once the sun goes round and gets lower in the sky I can just take it down again and then on the dull days, I've still got the brightest light I can get. But days like this are starting to get a little bit iffy. This sun is strong today and, um, you know, there are things close to the glass. Now, with the strength of the sun at this time of year, there's a lot of things are loving it. But there's some things are going to start complaining soon and we'll start getting patches on the leaves, which I don't want. I mean, if you get sun damage on leaves, it's the same as cold damage. Once it's there, it's there forever. It doesn't ever go away until the leaves drop. And on some plants, that's a hell of a long time. And you've got to sit there and look at the damage. So it's easier to err on the side of caution. So if you've got plants in, win, on window sills close to glass, you know, just think about the strength of the sun is getting stronger and staying there for longer as the day lengths increase. So take care please. As I said, I don't want a list of videos with loads of singe plants. <laughs> Even though the bright light's doing them, the world are good, you can overcook it. So take it easy. Um, as I was watering, what did I see? Oh, somebody asked me how Dendrobium senilli was doing. Well, the answer is very well, thank you very much. Now, this should have a proper winter rest, and it's not getting it. It's being allowed to grow on through the winter. It's getting good bright light, um, but it's continued to be watered. And quite honestly, um, that low left-hand growth there is new through the winter. That's pushed that growth on in the winter time. Yeah, there's another new growth coming at the base in the centre. That's pushed out in the winter. There's another one at the top there, and yet another one coming out below that one. It's growing. And the only reason it's doing that is because it's getting watered and very, very light feeds. So obviously it's not growing fast at this time of year. But given the number of growths on that plant, and the strength it's now got itself into from when I first got it, back in the middle of last year, that's going to be a big plant by the end of next year with a hell of a good root system in underneath it. Next year I can rest it. It's funny they look really sad. When they're rested, um, if all the new growths push out in the growing season and get fully matured, 
As it goes into its rest period, it dumps all of its leaves and it looks really sorry for itself. And then the blooms come out. And that's what we wait for on this. The blooms are gorgeous. And I'm looking forward to them again. I will not get any this spring. I'm confident in saying that. Even though there's a couple of old canes on there, they haven't been rested. So they're not rested old canes. So they're highly unlikely to bloom. But it's growing into a nice, strong, healthy plant which is what I wanted for this winter and push all those new growths on through next year plus any more that want to sprout out and get this into a big strong plant then we'll rest it <coughs> hopefully it'll bloom so that was that what else did somebody else ask about uh, ugh. so when people ask about a specific plant it's a matter of me remembering to film it next time I pick it up, if you see what I mean, because a lot of the plants, to get at them, I'd have to move a dozen plants just to get at one, and I just don't do that. I just wait till it comes round to watering, and then I pick it up and I look at it, and hopefully it jogs the old brain cells into thinking, oh, somebody asked about that one. <laughs> and then I may remember to film it. Um, somebody asked how my Jenkins CI and um, the Jenkins CI cross with Aggregatum are doing, any signs of buds yet? Well, to tell you the truth, they're right up in there and I don't know. That plant hasn't been down for over a fortnight. In fact, it might even be nearly three weeks now. It hasn't been down for a long time, so I haven't looked at it, so I don't know. They're just, I'm just leaving them be. The resting dendrobiums are just getting left. No temptation to get in there and give them water unless they need it. But they're not going to need it in quick succession, if you see what I mean. If I start seeing some desiccation that's starting to get a bit serious, then they'll get watered. But, um, you know, I don't need to do it that often. You know, until we get out the end of February, um, when we've got the day lengths back and everything, um, there's, there's just no rush to bring them out of their rest period. They're loving this extra light. Hopefully they're liking the cooler temperatures. They're probably not liking this heat today. It's been 27 degrees. <laughs> they wouldn't, I, I don't believe they would be getting that naturally in the wild. It's the one thing I can't stop. As it starts to get warmer as we head towards spring, I can't stop that. There's only so much cooling I can do in here. So uh, they have to put up with it. But you know, with the lack of water, the bright lights and the cold night, hopefully that does the job. We'll find out soon, <laughs> one way or the other. Um, oh, there's definitely something niggling me. Somebody asked about something, what's going on with your... Uh, and I've just forgotten. Oh well, maybe it'll come to me when I'm picking all the plants up next time. Oh, I know what it was. It was the, um, the, 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 the dendrobium with the weird name that Google's never heard of. Something like Aya or Ayla or something like that. Well, it's buried in there. And it's growing buds all over it. And um, next time I get that out, we'll have a look at that. Um, it's not strictly speaking a resting type, but it is getting a semi-rest, simply because it's not growing. But it is starting to push buds now. It's got to get some energy to push those buds on from somewhere. So I don't want to keep that one bone dry, obviously. So uh, we'll see how we go. But um, yeah, I'm starting to get a bit worried about some of these plants in that sun. We'll see what we can do. I think we might have to start putting the old shade netting back up just on the sunny days and then take it down again. It's going to be down more than it is up. So it's not going to be too much of a chore. It's just a matter of, um, you know, if it's going to be a sunny day, just wait till the sun comes round on the glass, pin that shade netting up, and then literally only two or three hours later it can come down again. But it just give that little bit of protection Especially, there could be new growths in there just pushing up. They're not going to like that uh, intense light on them. I do something that you might not think of yourselves. If I've got a plant, well, like a cattleya, for instance, up on the high shelf, obviously some are right up against the glass. Well, if I've got a new growth pushing out, I make sure that new growth's at the back of the plant, not at the front of the plant, if you see what I mean. So the plant itself is giving some protection for that new growth rather than it being in that full sun. And I do that with all my plants, even these ones along a shelf like that at the back. I don't put the new growths facing the sun. I put them facing away from the sun. Yeah, that, that way they get chance to get going without dehydrating. 
Now if a plant like that twinkle there decides to put out new growths all around the blinking plant, well I can't do it, can I? But when I can, I just point the new growths away from the brightest light, give them a chance to get going a bit first and get some roots out. Okay, uh, that'll do. Oh, that was something else I noticed. My one with the strange name that came from Rachel, which is Rodriguezia liana, which I think might go in a pot, but it's got there. It's got something growing at the base of the latest growth. Now, I don't believe that plant is big enough or old enough, if you know what I mean, mature enough, that's the expression I'm after, to be able to bloom. Um, it only pushed up the, it's grown two new growths since I got it, one small one, and then last year's was a nice big one. Um, so that's probably the next new growth starting now. It's highly unlikely to be a bloom spike, but it's starting to move, and I'm noticing that, that this was the one that had the scale tucked away down in there, which seems to have gone now, good. <coughs> But, um, yeah, so uh, not much else. Oh, my Orengus spikes are pushing on at a better rate now. They're coming on nicely. Now, I don't know how many of how many blooms there will be. It looks like four. It looks like four, maybe five on each. But they've they've got a long way to go. They're slow growing, but they're pushing on nicely. There's two good spikes on that plant. But, um, those plants don't ever grow that big. You know, if you want a nice little Orangus, that's a good one to choose. Fastuosa, that is. Nice one. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that and um, I'll see you next time, whenever next time is. I just managed to find a gap today to just get the camera out for a minute or two. And um, that won't happen tomorrow. Uh, I may get a chance to film something Sunday. It won't happen Monday. We'll be back to Tuesday as originally thought of. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Thanks for dropping by.